in what might be the worst take to hit the internet this month, Gary Gensler talks about conflicts of interest. What the heck does he think? Is he speaking from a position of authority? We'll take a listen in just a second. And earlier this week on Monday, he spoke at a FINRA conference in D.C. and issued a stern warning to crypto holders. Let's take a look at that too and see if there's any validity there or if it's just a bunch of bunk. But if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Let's take a quick look at the crypto market today. We are at 1.26 trillion. I don't trust this percent increase because we're right about where we were this time yesterday. But uh, Bitcoin under 30,000 again. Ethereum barely hanging on to the 2K. XRP back to 42 cents where it's been hanging out for a bit here. And you can see on down the list of the top cryptos. Ah, uh, still down, you know, double digit percentages on the seven day. But let's get to the interesting stuff. Gary Gensler talks in his office hours on YouTube as well as Twitter. And he tweeted this out earlier. When you make decisions with other people's money, there are going to be conflicts of interest. We'll listen in. It's a short clip. It's funny uh, and awkward and weird and all the things you would expect from a Gary Gensler video. But look at this tweet here. John Deaton, I literally can't believe you're tweeting about conflicts of interest. We know about all the mess going on at the SEC. But let's take a listen to some of the Gary Gensler elevator music here. Lead in to him talking about conflicts of interest in investment management. It's a fun take for us to maybe get a laugh out of all of this mess we've been in. But let's listen to what Gary has to say. Maybe he's got some good advice for us in the investing community. Often grocery stores are laid out to encourage impulse buying, such as when the store places the fruits and vegetables on the perimeter. But the snacks, they're in a central place, maybe just by the cash register. Well, we all understand that grocery stores may do this to maximize some profits. However, when you seek advice from advisors, like doctors and lawyers, the expectation changes. These professionals serve in a position of trust, and they must meet standards of conduct to ensure they are looking out for your benefit, not their profits. Well, similarly, when we turn to financial professionals for advice, as so many Americans do, there's a need that they look out for us. When you make a decision with other people's money, there's going to be some inherent conflicts. That's a situation as- Gary, there are some inherent conflicts when you're messing with other people's money. Maybe when you take legal action against certain parties without having evidence and drag it on over a year and a half, it will have an impact. Might you say a ripple effect? Gary, shameful. But let, let's listen in. It'll be good here, right? He's going to tell us something worthwhile. Old as antiquity. Left unchecked, these conflicts might affect the quality of the advice that you receive and in turn, the financial future you have worked so hard to build. There are built in certain concepts embedded in our regulation protect you, like fiduciary duty, something called duty of care, duty of loyalty, best execution, best interest. These words have real meaning to us at the Securities and Exchange. Gary's thinking about duty so much, uh, but yet the SEC continues to fail in fulfilling their mission and meeting the duty that they have. And it's just shameful that we're even seeing this and uh, very hypocritical saying that they have such a real meaning to the SEC when we see that there were rampant conflicts even within this agency. Commission, and we expect them to have real meeting for investment professionals. Recently, our staff issued a bulletin about some of these principles, such as that investment professionals should, when giving advice, examine the reasonably available alternatives. Kind of makes sense. Consider the risks and costs that their recommendations might create for you. And importantly, make recommendations with your best interest in mind, not 
theirs. These obligations protect all of us and build trust in our financial system. If you think that investment professional might not be following these standards, reach out to us and find other resources. Everything we do at the SEC is to help protect investors, and we are here to work for you. Everything we do at the SEC is to help protect investors, and we are here to work for you. Comment below if you believe that statement to be true. Well, Gary, thank you for sharing your perspective here, but honestly, we are not seeing this in the community. We're not seeing the protection from the SEC. We're not seeing the resources being allocated appropriately to investigate those parties that are creating legitimate problems. And we're seeing a total dereliction of duty uh, from the leadership at the SEC. And when we see this hearing on Thursday of the two new potential commissioners, I hope that they get asked some serious questions to try and tease out where their take is as they will have a significant influence taking up 40 percent of the commissioner roles if those two do get to come in and will have a significant sway on the voting now as promised here is gary gensler's warning to crypto after the meltdown of last week so he did speak here at this FINRA conference in D.C. just Monday, yesterday, and he opined that the investing public isn't getting full and fair disclosures and that cryptocurrencies should be regulated as securities. The investment public is not getting disclosures. When you make other asset purchases, we have this basic bargain. You, the investing public, can make your choices about what risks you take, Gensler said. There's supposed to be full and fair disclosure and people aren't supposed to lie to you. Right now, many of these entrepreneurs come up with an idea and they want to raise money from you. That puts it inside of the securities test. Gensler warned that investors should not think they own their crypto tokens, noting that using a digital wallet on a platform constitutes a transfer of ownership to the platform. If the platform goes down, guess what? You just have a counterparty relationship with the platform, Gensler said. Get in line at bankruptcy court. Now, pausing for a second here, that is actually a legitimate point. One of the rare few that Gensler does make as far as crypto platforms go. And with that, just a reminder, I'll link in the video description. If you are still keeping your assets on an exchange, you are exposing yourself to that risk. Using something like a ledger helps you to self-custody and not have to worry about something going wrong with that particular platform you're using. So if it's something you're interested in, if you want to take that extra step in protecting your digital assets, check it out in the link in the video description. Uh, surprisingly, he did make a valid point here. So I will give him credit where credit's due. That is a solid point, And we've seen that, like that Coinbase disclosure that just came out last week. The SEC chair argued that the digital asset class is not that decentralized, pointing to a handful of major trading and lending venues that handle the majority of crypto asset volume. He called for basic investor protections, including market integrity, barring front-running customers and anti-manipulation and fraud, and also said crypto platforms are, also, are often trading and making markets against investors. When the platforms take your custody, when they take those tokens, they can use them, they can trade them. It's not like when you trade in the equity markets. They're actually making markets markets against you. Gensler's strong comments about crypto's pitfalls come after the Terra USD collapse and Luna as well going down last week. The SEC chair has made the case for regulating stablecoins in particular, flagging that stablecoins, which are used to trade in and out of different cryptos, are actually often owned by the platforms and that individual investors have no direct right of redemption for the two largest stablecoins by market cap, which were created by crypto trading or lending platforms. Gensler has been a strong advocate of regulating cryptos and repeatedly tried to assert authority over regulating the asset class through applying the definition of securities to the entire asset class, mind you. He and the agency have stopped short of issuing specific regulations to oversee crypto, instead encouraging crypto platforms to voluntarily sign up with the SEC 
or opting to take enforcement action against crypto players that allegedly fall short of securities laws. And we've seen this happen in the actions taken by the SEC. They say, come in and talk to us, but then they continue to pursue and litigate despite those businesses and entities wanting to be compliant. You see this with Ripple. You saw it with Coinbase even when they wanted to offer the Lend product. You see it with Library, where the SEC won't even give them answers when they've tried to see what they could do to comply or what they needed to change. There was no direction, no answers given. So there is a lot of mess at the SEC still to be cleaned up. And while Gary can make one point right every so often, a stopped clock is still right twice a day. And that seems to be the case here with Chair Gensler as well. I hope you found this information to be helpful. If you did, hit a like. It helps the channel a ton and make sure that you get the information most important to you. If you want to support the channel, do check out those links in the video description, including the Ledger Nano S Plus that they just released that has the added functionality for DeFi and NFTs. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. Thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me. I do truly appreciate Appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.